for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you who came or who, who were here last year, thank you for coming back. It's been, um, needless to say, an exciting year of exponential growth for our industry. And, uh, you know, we define our industry obviously as peer to peer lending, which, by the way, got a new name this year uh, marketplace lending uh, and crowdfunded equities under Title II. Uh, on the marketplace lending side of the house, when we look at the growth, in January, if we held our last event um, in, in December of 13, in January 2013, Prosper uh, recorded $9 million in loan originations. And John, I believe last month, $170 million? 172, correct. There you go. <laughs> I mean, incredible. Uh, Lending Club is on deck to go, <laughs> to, go uh, to go public. SoFi just announced that as well. Congratulations to them. And so far, moving into the mortgage world and securitization world, and uh, thanks for, for, to them for, for sponsoring the event. Um, new players, like Circle Back Lending, partnering with Jefferies uh, and doing a $500 million securitization with them, which we'll talk about later today. And brand new players, which are being announced today for the first time, like our platinum sponsor, Real Partner, who for the first time in history is giving access to um, lo existing performing loans to accredited investors. And to our partners also at Lenzone, uh, thank you also for sponsoring, who for the first time um, are marrying social networking, think LinkedIn meets peer-to-peer -peer real estate, announcing and launching today. So congratulations to, to you guys. On the crowd finance equities side of the house, it's been an amazing year. Obviously, September 23rd last year marked the date when Title II uh, was implemented, allowing companies to generally solicit. Uh, and on the CrowdNetic platform, where we track all of the data in the US in real time and make it available out to, to partners, um, we've tracked 4,800 companies who checked the box to take advantage of general solicitation. And as of October 1st, uh, 375 million was raised online um, through the platforms that we're partnered with. Uh, a, 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 an amazing year. Um, this year, I think, is going to be even bigger. I commend um, all of you for being here because um, if anyone tells you that our world is changing, they're wrong. It changed. <laughs> and for those of you in the room, you saw it already, and you're innovating, and you're on the forefront, and that's what we need. And uh, if, you, if you look at the roster, and we'll, we'll provide some statistics on the attendees today, but 80% uh, of, of the attendees come from Wall Street, mainstream financial services, asset managers, hedge funds, um, uh, financial advisors. Without spending too much more time on, uh, on giving kudos to our, our sponsors, um, I'm very proud to uh, present and introduce my friend Jason Best, um, who in my mind is a big celebrity in lots of people's minds, uh, who's, who's, who's um, traveled the world, needless to say, so it's amazing we've caught him here um, to be able to deliver the keynote. If you don't know Jason, um, he and his business partner Sherwood Niece are are legends, they're pioneers. They, without them, this, the equity side of our industry wouldn't live for sure. Um, Jason uh, Best is co-author uh, co of Crowdfunding for Dummies, which we have none of in here. Um, co-author with, with Sherwood of the World Bank uh, Research Report on Crowd Finance that was released last, last November. Um, and then also co-author of, of uh, what's the third one you wanted me to mention here? Um, one more. That was it? And then, oh, no, the biggest one, co-author of the crowdfunding framework in the JOBS Act. See, I, I messed up the, I almost did it. Um, so without further ado, Jason Best. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's see, I've got the lapel mic. Is that working? Can you guys hear me okay? So the... You know, I think just to, to echo what, uh, what Luana said, that this has really been a, a, an incredible year. I think a year ago, a lot of people were saying things like, will it work? And I think now we can say that it has worked and it is working. That, that crowd finance, whether it be equity or debt, ha has, has become a very successful new industry, a uh, new asset class. And what's fascinating is to see how that will develop over time. 
I mean, another, one other data point that gets significant in this is the fact that in, uh, just recently we had our first IPO, our first company that was uh, crowdfunded a few months ago that now has had an, a successful IPO on NASDAQ called Rewalk. It was initially funded through the Our Crowd platform uh, and now, now is public on NASDAQ. So I think at the top line, really the, what I want to talk about is some global themes for this year, for, for next year, really for 2015, and to sort of talk about them in the domestic market, thinking about platforms, and then also kind of broadening that out to, see, to talk about what we're seeing globally in the work that we're doing in other countries. Um, I think, you know, first of all, from a platform perspective, we're seeing greater diversification uh, over time next year. I think that not only will you see platforms begin to specialize, but I think the, the most important thing are features matter. Features will matter more next year than they have this year. Uh, because this year it was about, do you have a platform? Does it, co does it complete transactions effectively? Uh, can, we, can we be on par with the competition? I think next year you're going to see a lot more interest in what can you do for me? What can you do for me during the raise and what can you do for me after the raise? And so things like investor relations, uh, the ability to do syndication, the ability to get vet better visibility for those deals, and also how are you going to make it easier for investors to, to more easily find interesting opportunities via you know, different mechanisms than just your site? Um, another theme really is if you build it, they will probably not come. Um, you know, and I think one of the big interesting things this year has been the evolution in thinking about what's important. A lot of uh, people started out, you know, a year ago by saying if we just have the right technology and the right platform, we're going to get the best deals and everyone's going to come to our platform and it's going to be great. I think what we've found is that it, obviously it's all about the investor and how are you going to attract investors, quality investors, and then how are you going to keep them and wanting to come back and reinvest in your platform over and over again. And so, increasingly, uh, when Title III comes in, into play, but also even now in Title II, it's about education. What kind of educational tools can you offer so that new, in, new accredited investors can understand this space, and even existing angel investors who have a way of thinking and a way of, of considering this space also can, can learn about this crowd finance space. Another theme we're seeing uh, is hybridization of funding sources. Uh, so, uh, you know, two years ago, uh, I was speaking at the Angel Capital Association in San Francisco, and, uh, you know, there were people coming at me with pitchforks and knives and, and uh, you know, torches. Charlie was there. <laughs> um, and uh, I think now what we're seeing is what we've already seen in the UK for a couple of years is angel groups are looking at this as deal flow. Angel groups are looking at, at crowd finance as just another, another part of this ecosystem. And we're certainly seeing that. We're also seeing now a lot of venture capital firms who are looking at this as, you know, two years ago, they, a company that was crowdfunded was toxic, now looking at companies that are crowdfunding, whether it be on rewards or equity or debt, as, as deal flow as an opportunity to have access to deal flow in different geographies you may have never had access to before in, in things that you care about. And I was talking with a friend of mine who uh, works at a VC firm in the Bay Area where I live, and he said, you know, look, he, he does hardware tech, and every morning, uh, you know, he, he stops at a couple different crowdfunding platforms. Uh, that, that's how he starts his day, by looking, looking for companies raising money on those platforms. I think a couple of other examples of this are, I mean, recently the Seed Invest and Gust announcement. Uh, you're having, you know, this large angel network come together with an equity platform uh, to, you know, share technology and, and share opportunities. Uh, another is the CrowdCube mini bond. Uh, the fact that you now have, there's now a, a mini bond capability uh, in the UK to raise over a million pounds uh, to, to provide that kind of fixed return uh, that hasn't been available before. And they've done three of them now. I think that um, also what we're seeing are, are new entrants in the U.S., but more importantly, entrants outside of the U.S. when they're looking in their home markets, who are, who are looking at this as an integrated market, as a crowd finance market, and how are they going to create a, kind of a full stack crowd finance platform that, that can also include equity, debt, and rewards or some combination of the two. So they're really not looking at it as either or, but really as combinations and what's right for those, for those spaces. Um, and then finally, I think that, you know, it, it's, it, as we move into the, looking at this in a more global perspective, 
one of the things that we spent a lot of time doing as we traveled is kind of creating this ecosystem map and creating a, a model for how to think about this space. Because it's, it's changing rapidly, it's moving very quickly, it's growing exponentially, not just in the US, but in other countries. And so you know, what we've tried to do is put in place a four sector model that we think helps us understand it and helps our clients understand it. Really thinking about first infrastructure, so platforms, secondary markets, those sorts of things. Uh, second category really are trust and transparency tools. Because right now, most of the, most of the, on the equity and debt side, a lot of that is happening among people that you know or people that the business knows or knows of. Uh, how do we create these trust and transparency tools to allow those things to scale over time? Uh, third, uh, metrics and analytics. So just like with the online advertising world, as that was formed, you had to have metrics and analytics to make that process and that, that market more effective. Uh, more transparent and, and, and to be able to scale. The same thing will be true in crowd finance. Uh, and then finally, the white space, which is sort of all the other things we don't know what, it, what they are yet. The, th the services, uh, like, you know, three years ago, I didn't know I needed a service like Uber, and now it's hard to imagine life without it. One of the really exciting things when we travel is we typically meet with not only entrepreneurs and uh, regulators, government folks, but also uh, angel groups that exist in different countries. And a lot of times, one of the problems with angel groups in many other countries is, first, it's hard to find deal flow. Second, the process itself of angel investing is incredibly high friction. And so what we're seeing is a strong interest in the technology that's been created for crowdfunding to be utilized in a closed way with angel groups uh, as a way to increase deal flow, as a way for them to actually be able to do deals, as opposed to one or two deals a year, to be able to move that to one or two deals a month. Right? That, that's, that would be massive in many, many countries around the world. Um, and we're also seeing this in um, creating a lot of interest for VCs because the VC market, frankly, in most countries outside of the United States is small to nascent. And uh, again, the same problems of how do I find investors for high risk assets and also how do I find deal flow that makes sense? They're able to, through these tools, they're able to find both of those much more quickly, and so increasing deal flow and increasing a market that hasn't existed before. So being able to help those VC firms understand this space and, and be able to utilize those tools has been really interesting. Um, you know, we're seeing new countries um, that are moving forward in both public and private ways with crowdfunding. Uh, we, you know, just got back from a swing through Asia. Uh, Malaysia will be launching equity crowdfunding uh, nationally by March of next year. Uh, they'll be the first country in Asia to do it and the first Muslim-majority nation to do it. So that's very, very interesting. Uh, Thailand will be, will be next up. They will be launching, I think, sometime later 2015. Uh, work, been working with their Securities Commission quite closely, headed back there next month. Uh, I think that's really, really interesting. Um, you know, Singapore, Korea, Japan, Hong Kong, all, all considering uh, crowdfunding, crowdfinance, really, whether it be equity or debt. Uh, Singapore just licensed their first peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending site. Uh, so you know, Asia is really kind of moving forward pretty quickly in pretty interesting ways. I think also when you look at Latin America, uh, we're headed down to Chile in a couple of weeks to work with the Ministry of Finance there on structuring their crowdfunding regulation. Uh, also we'll be working with Mexico next year on their regulation and, and legislation. And there are a couple other countries in Latin America that I think towards the end of next year will also be moving quickly to catch up just from a competitive standpoint uh, and a desire to have this sort of movement take place. The MENA region is also really interesting. We spent a fair amount of time there. Uh, Lebanon actually has crowdfunding regulation in place. I think Dubai is obviously kind of like the first place that it would actually have some traction. The challenge there is that when you uh, build a, uh, a infrastructure for funding that is focused on large corporates, it takes a while for those sort of environments many times to see the value of funding SMEs, that see, that see those things as two separate things. We've been working on helping them understand that. I, I don't know if that'll happen in 2015 or not. I think 2016, probably more likely. Uh, Turkey also very interested. They, their Securities Commission has said that they are going to move forward with equity and debt crowdfunding. Uh, and so I think that that will be an interesting market to see. We'll be headed there in December. Um, and then also there's a couple of countries in Southern Europe that are also looking at ways to sort of step ahead and trying to uh, do some, something innovative and new. We're also starting to see a couple of things that are, that are really new just in the last few months, which are kind of a combination of things. It's large corporates beginning to get involved in this space. 
and also large corporates thinking about this from a regional perspective. So how these companies are thinking about who are involved, whether it be uh, consumer brands, whether it be financial institutions, uh, other types of large corporates who have operations in, in one or more countries, how can I use this with the other existing infrastructure and efforts and strategies that I have to accelerate those? And that's looking at it from a debt, equity, rewards, uh, and even crowdsourcing perspective. So there's a lot of integrated thinking happening there about how to, how to, how to scale this. So what's really cool is, I mean, it, we're, I mean, Woody and I are entrepreneurs. We're not lawyers, we're not accountants, we're not regulators. We spend a fair amount of time with, with those folks. What's exciting is that now we're getting a chance to spend more time uh, with large corporates, with entrepreneurs, with other folks in you know, th these countries who are really making these things happen. And so it's increasingly not just uh, thinking about the regulation and the, and, the, and the superstructure for these things to take place, but it's also coming, people coming and saying, like, what are the solutions? You know, how do we do these sorts of things? Which demonstrates that, that these are programs that these countries are really serious about. These are not press release opportunities for these countries. They look at them as core, central opportunities for job creation. And that, that's what it all comes down to. That's what, that's what this was about in the U.S. That's what it's about in every country. Um, you know, having large numbers of people in their 20s with, with no jobs is a bad idea. Right? And so how do, we, how do we create opportunities for people to build a business, which everyone sort of says is the way that you build an economy is through small business and entrepreneurship. And so the only way to do that really um, is this new infrastructure that we have called crowd finance. And so it's been, you know, it's a really exciting opportunity for us to be a part of it. Uh, I'm gonna thank Thompson Reuters for hosting this today. Uh, and certainly thank uh, uh, Crowdnetic and, and Luan for the invitation to be here. And so thank you all and we look forward to a great day today.